Today we're going to go over the calculations involved for calculating the free ion concentrations in a complex ion reaction. We discussed complex ions before, and if you remember from lecture, the KFs are usually pretty large, so that means it's a limiting reactant type problem. This is similar to a titration problem where you're given an acid base and you're asked to calculate the pH along a titration curve. Typically we assume that there's a, it's a limiting reactant kind of problem and then we pick the appropriate equilibrium after we figure out whether or not there's acid left or an excess of base or base left and an excess of acid depending on if it's a acid titrated with a base or base titrated with an acid. So KFs, usually large, if you're given reactants, assume the reaction goes to completion. That means set up an ice table, do a limiting reactant, take the final concentrations, plug them into the same equilibrium, and then calculate how much ion is left using the KF and the KF expression. So here's a typical problem. What's the silver ion concentration of a solution that's initially 0 0.03 molar in silver nitrate and 0 0.1 molar in sodium cyanide? So how do you know what product is formed? Well, complex ions, as the name implies, have a charge. When we're doing precipitation problems, if this had been a precipitation of silver cyanide, you could use the charge of the silver ion and the charge of the cyanide to predict the product. Because complex ions have a charge, you can't depend on that to tell you what the formula is. So what we do is we look up KF, and with each KF is given the formula for the complex ion. So let's look at this problem in a little more detail. I'll be using the equation to discuss the limitations of trying to calculate without a, using a double ice table. So in this problem it says we have 0 0.03 molar silver nitrate and 0 0.1 molar sodium cyanide. I looked up KF. So KF is 1 times 10 to the 20th. So this is a KF, so it's for the formation of the complex ion. And with that KF value, I find the formula for the complex ion. The complex ion looks like this. So, silver cyanide, that's the formula for the complex ion. And because it's a KF, it's formed from silver and cyanide ions. So when you're looking at the formula up here, just ignore the nitrate and the formula here, and you ignore the sodium. Those are the spectator ions in the problem. So this is for the formation from the ions. So I can write Ag plus, remember these are all aqueous, plus two Cn minuses. In this problem, you would say, oh, I have 0 0.03 molar silver, and I have 0 0.10 molar cyanide. We'll assume that the silver cyanide is zero, and that the reaction is going to the right. We can draw our change. So this is the initial. This is the change. So this is minus x minus 2x and plus x. If we write the equilibrium line down here, this is 0 0.03 minus x. 0 0.10 minus 2x and x. The KF expression looks like this. It's the concentration of the complex ion oops, sorry, a little messy. divided by the concentration of the silver ion times the concentration of the cyanide ion 
squared. And that's 1 times 10 to the minus 20. So looking down here, oops, sorry. Didn't mean to scribble all over there. Looking down here, that's where this equation comes from. So this is the expression where I've plugged in the concentration of the silver ion and the concentration of the cyanide ion and then this concentration of the complex ion. That's equal again to 10 to the minus 20, 1 times 10 to the minus 20. Now if you do this problem in a computer or a calculator, what you will most likely find is that there are multiple roots to this equation but the one chemically that makes the most sense is going to be something that where x is approximately equal to 0 0.03. So why is this a problem? It's a problem because when you plug it in over here, you're going to get 0. Now it's not that the value is 0, but the value is actually very low. And in these problems, what we need to find out is what is the concentration of that ion. So what we do because we know that x is going to be about 0 0.03, and we know that because the k value is large, we treat this like a limiting reactant problem. We'll take, instead of assuming that the equilibrium value for silver is this, we'll look to say, well, this looks like the limiting reactant, so let's just assume that x is equal to 0 0.03. That means the amount of silver that, or the cyanide ion that's left is going to be about 0 0.04 and X is going to be 0 0.03. So the complex ion concentration is 0 0.03. The silver ion is effectively 0. Now what we do is we set up a second ice table. And in the second ice table, we write the same reaction. A lot of people want to flip the reaction around and write what's called a KD expression, the dissociation of the complex ion. I find it's far simpler simply to use the KF expression. So here's my formation equation again. And now I take my values from my final, this is now a final and not an equilibrium because we did a double ice table. We take those values and we plug them in to the equation. So I have 0 for silver ion. I have 0 0.04 for the cyanide ion. And then I have 0 0.03 for the complex ion. That's my initial of my change. And I'll have my equilibrium. So how do I solve this? Well, as you might expect, because the silver concentration is zero, the reaction has to be going this way. So this side has minus x. This is plus 2x. And this will be x. So. Finally, I have x on my equilibrium line, 0 0.04 plus 2x, and 0 0.03 minus x. I can take those and plug them in to my equilibrium expression. And there's the equation that you come up with down at the bottom. Now what you do with this expression is you assume that x is small. So if x is small, we can ignore it here, and we can ignore it here. You can't ignore that one. So now what we have is we have that 0 0.030 divided by x times 0 0.04 squared is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 20. And then we can rearrange this so that x is on the top. And we write that 
x is equal to 0 0.030 divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 20 times 0 0.04 squared. So if I do that, what I find, oh, by the way, that's a, my mistake here, plus 20. If I do that, what I find is that x is equal to 1.9 times 10 to the minus 19. So that's the concentration, because if you look back here, that's uh, what I used for x. That's the concentration of the silver ion. Now, because this is the silver ion and it's not bound to the complex ion, we refer to this as the free ion concentration. The total ion concentration is actually the ion concentration that we started with in the initial part of the problem. That is, there's silver ion in the complex, and there's also silver ion as free ion. So I hope that helps with the calculation of the free ion concentration problems.